Um, <clears throat> today I'd like to talk about um, observation without judgment and the uh, the uh, round fossilized bugs or whatever of uh, and, and they were incorporated in art I'll get it out I'll have to start this over a bit that's what it's all about the uh, what they used you know what they saw and then they used that particular stone for art and uh, whenever I find or see one of these little fossilized things it goes in the bucket immediately I know there's going to be something cool out of it or I mean I hope there is uh, let me start again good morning folks I like to come out here real early in the morning I usually get some good thoughts of cooking. Um, I want to find the words to discuss these, the use of fossils that these folks did in their art. Um, and this is a, an example of round things, round fossils. That was used in their art. Um, let me see my notes. Observation without judgment. Um, this is some of my thoughts on viewing this ancient, ancient art. Now, uh, these little bugs or whatever that was fossilized, and these folks used them in their art... Uh, that round, um, oh, I've got to stop here for a second. That one right there, and this one right here, still shows a lot of color. I mean, this is some good preserved art. These are cool. They, they, those two show a lot of color. Others here show color. Anyway, I, those are kind of cool. Observation without judgment. Um, how to view ancient art. Well, these little round circles, these fossils that was used, incorporated in the art, uh, they could be an eye, they could be the moon, the sun, they could be a seed or an egg. They could be a stone from a sling. There's so many uh, scenarios that can be uh, imagined when looking at this art. So I feel that to really view this art, we have to have observation without judgment. We've got to let the stone talk to us. Because it's so easy to uh, take an image and imagine up some why. You know, like, this is why this is this way. Anyway, I want to show you some really incredible art where these folks use these fossils to uh, express stuff. It's pretty neat. This one was, uh, you know, the reverse image of a fossil was there and it's used for a grinding stone for red ochre. It was used to grind up red ochre and that's really neat to have that washboard effect to make color with. Uh, this one is extremely outstanding. It, uh, besides having this awesome image on it, but 
when this bug was fossilized or, uh, you know, when it was covered up, it fossilized it perfectly. The head's still there, the little feet. This is actually the bug right there. And it's a, it's a beagle, I mean a, a beetle. And I, you know, the, the image, the, what's well, the beetle? A great big giant beetle. But the art on here is so cool. Um, and the human images. I, I just, I see the human images. So that has to be incorporated into the, the, the art, the picture that they were, who, you know, no, we may not ever know exactly what that artist meant by this, but the human image on these stones are so, uh, well, there's so many. Really cool looking art. It's got, I don't know. Creekstein said it best. Uh, he calls it primary image. You know, there was first an image, you know, imagined on the stone. And then they put that image in it. And then from that image, other images came about. And it seems like the human image is one of the first they put on there. On many stones. And then they work from that. And that's why it seems like there's headdresses on the human of birds and animals. It's But the human face had to be sort of pecked or worked into the stone first. Now, I don't know about that for sure. I'm just saying it sure looks consistent on some of this stuff that I'm looking at. Now, these right here, I really don't see that many human images or I'm not looking right now I'm looking at the awesome way they used the uh, these round fossils uh, it's pretty cool